Let's quickly revisit our time in Kyrgyzstan so far. We had some mechanical issues. We got a flat tire, we're probably about 10 minutes into the country. We hit some bad weather, more tire issues, and yet again, more tire issues. Let's give it a go. And then it rained again. We went up into the mountains and were told by this guy that we were completely lost. So we'll go back. We attempted to go over the Tossor High Pass. Okay, so close, but we just can't get through. That sucks. Licking our wounds, we camped in the mountains for the night, and then the next day we pressed on through the valley. Uh, so we had a big, big, big problem. But unfortunately my clutch died, so we had to abandon the bikes. We spent the next day and a half trekking out of the mountains, only to trek back in in a few days' time to retrieve the bikes. Conditions were still a little bit muddy. Yes! So stoked! So I'm gonna give you a little walking tour of the setup we got here. A swamp. Look at it. Mmm. Swampy. But we did manage to temporarily fix my clutch. Um, what's it called? Friction plate is frictionless. Instead of retreating back the way we came, we decided to have another crack at the Tossa High Pass. So that turned out to be a bad idea. Unfortunately, we failed again. But to be fair, it wasn't all that bad. Amongst all the mechanical issues and shitty weather, there were glimpses of some of the most beautiful scenery we have ever seen. We were riding with wild horses and wild cattle. We stayed in yurt camps in the mountains and we enjoyed every little bit of it. Been to. This is what it's all been about. And now that we're all caught up, let's get back to the story. After our little mountain mishap, we retreated back down to Naren because we still had to try to fix my clutch problem. We did actually get new clutch plates for Jay's bike off some guys yesterday, which is great. They actually had spares with them and they were traveling through Kyrgyzstan. They said, you know, we'll sell them to you at the price we pay, which is awesome. Um, the issue being we think Jay's bike's messing up because of the oil we've been using and the um, friction additives which are in there. So Jay's doing some research last night and um, unfortunately we can't find the oil we need. But we did read you could put diesel oil in there and it'll be better than what we have. So um, I'll take you over to Jay and he can explain to you what's going on. So Jay, what's the latest? Uh, so we've got new clutch plates from a very nice guy that's traveling, nice group of guys that are traveling through. They, they're just doing a little three week holiday and very luckily they brought clutch plates with them for the DR. So they sold them to us, which is awesome because it means we don't have to wait to order them from like Europe or the States. Uh, now, so, put them in, they should be good. And now pouring this, it's a good quality brand of engine oil, it's called Bon Aqua. It's good stuff. Uh, this is diesel oil, in a petrol bike. Don't ask questions. But let's just hope this is the end of our, our problems, because man, have we had a few in Kyrgyzstan. We're actually pouring three different brand diesel engine oil. We'll start up on Aqua, I think it's probably the purest, and then we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> what do I want? Next up is the Kyrgyzstan Coca-Cola diesel engine oil brand. I heard good things. Mmm. Pulpy. <laughs> Pulpy peach diesel engine oil. Let's, uh, let's hope these bottles are clean properly. <laughs> this is my favourite one. I'll probably only use a little bit of this one. Anyway, that's the, um, that's the update for today. We're hoping it's gonna be a cruisy day. Everything's gonna go right for once. We're planning on camping tonight to save a bit of money. Tomorrow we're gonna head to Caracol and go around the lake, so we'll show you some footage of that. But yeah, we just want an easy day with no issues. So please, please wish us luck. <laughs> yeah, luck was not on our side. It basically rained for two days straight and not just a drizzle, it, it was a lot of rain. But because we were already falling behind schedule, we pressed on through the rain and had to skip Caracol and head around the north of Isikul Lake. Okay, so we're kind of back on track. <laughs> After all the palaver with my clutch and then getting back to Naren, uh, we, we, we basically headed back towards the lake, towards Caracol, and we just got drenched. 
the whole way there. We got drenched. Yep. We did end up staying at Tamga, the same place we were before. We picked up our gear. Uh, we weren't meant to stay there, but it was raining so much that we decided we'd had enough. We'd had enough of being cold and wet. Uh, and now, I think, what's the name of this place? Cop, Copu, Al, Copu Alta? Chopo Alta? Something like that. What's, what's this place called? Chopon Atta. Chopon Atta. Atta. There you go. <laughs> Um, this, which is just north of the lake, uh, and it's beautiful. And yeah. for the first time, look at this. For the first time in days, blue skies. It's very, very exciting. James, you look excited. However. <laughs> yeah, so this is the problem. To continue with the uh, Kyrgyzstan saga of every day we're having issues, last night we got here, we're like, we'll stay here two days, catch up on some rest and do some editing. And then we realized my, uh, my fork seals are leaking. Oh, yeah. forks are leaking. Bom, bom. His right fork's leaking. Um, and because there's very few bikes in Kyrgyzstan, literally no bikes in Kyrgyzstan, we <laughs> can't find any fork oil here. So it's fate that we have to go to Bishkek. Yeah, which is okay, I guess. Yeah. So uh, we'll check out the capital city and um, hopefully find some guys that can yeah. help us. So uh, Bishkek, here Bishkek we come. It is. But first, it's a cool lake. The thing is huge. Like, probably kind of see the mountains on the other side. Tamga is actually right over there where we were after the incident. Uh, but anyway, it's not quite winter, but it's not quite summer either. It's still a bit cold, but apparently this water still stays kind of warm. So why not swim in it? Here we go. <laughs> They were lying, it's f***ing freezing. <sighs> After that, we jumped back on the bikes and headed straight to Bishkek, the capital city. With some locals helped us find the mechanic we were looking for. Okay, so we made it to Bishkek. We went to Iron Horse Mechanics, but uh, they were too busy. Luckily, one of the guys there brought us to this place. Sorry, it's a bit noisy. Things called Peppers. Um, they're also too busy, but they've said we can use their tools to to fix our bikes, which is all we really need to be honest. Here's the issue. Our bike saga continues. So we've worked out both James's seals are leaking. So they're both gone. And one of mine is leaking, which is just great. The problem is we've only got one set of seals between us. So uh, we'll have to fix James's bike. And I'll just try to clean mine, get in there, hopefully get any crap out and see if it'll seal. It probably won't. But these guys reckon it'll take three weeks to get the part, which we don't have. So we'll just have to keep going. Um, other than that, I'll whip my chain off, do other few things. It's basically just good to have a workshop with tools. We'll get it all sorted. Uh, and we've also just learned that, well, I, I started noticing it a few days ago, my steering head bearings are gone as well. Just to add to the list. Don't know how I'm going to fix those. I might have to order parts to Dushanbe or something. What are you doing, James? Put my tire back on. We've had a number of issues. The last steps of the day. We've been here for quite a long time. We actually started doing the forks, then the mechanic kind of just took over. I thought we were doing alright. Um, anyway, been here for about five hours. It's been a weird day, weird week, bikes falling apart. We're probably just going to go home and drink vodka and drown our sorrows. I don't know. What was that, Jim? That's definitely what we're doing. We're starving. I'm, s I'm so hungry. I saw my vodka. You're talking about food. I need food. Vodka will aid the food. But I need food. <laughs> could you get any closer? <laughs> I probably could, yes. Go away. <laughs> So the plan is to now get out of the city and spend the next two days heading towards Son Cool. But there are a few things we wanted to do along the way. All right, finally, we're camping. And it looks like luck is going our way. Look at the weather. We have had a shit two weeks in Kyrgyzstan. A bitch, literally everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. As you've seen already, um, yesterday we left Bishkek 
And we kind of were like, listen, let's just take our time against the song cool. We'll find a place to camp. We'll just chill out. <laughs> and then uh, we were like, we just need to quickly swing past the Turkmenistan embassy. A yeah, five minute job. Our fault because we put the wrong entry border to go into Turkmenistan. Yeah. So we were like, we'll quickly swing past, see if we can change the entry border. Got there at just before 12, left the embassy at about 6.15. They had like three lunches, it seemed. They needed us to go into the city to pay 10 US dollars into a, a bank. bank. We need to get photocopies. Uh, it just it was ridiculous. It was like, can't we just give you $10? No, you have to pay it into our bank in the city. So you have to go to the city. And oh. can we email you and you can print it because you've no. just printed it as a document? No. No. Anyway, anyway so that was that. We go on the road. And then the, the best part was so it's 6.15. We we're like, all right, we've got like two and a bit hours sunlight. We can just motor through. Just get the hell out of the city. Go camp somewhere. We had this place in mind, which is beautiful. We literally drove around the corner and there was the police would just put a bus across the road and we're blocking the road. Some like government official or something was coming through, but oh, every- An hour and 15 yeah. minutes, we had to just sit there and wait. And we looked on the map if we could go a different route and we realized that all the routes were crossing the main road that they were blocking, so there was no real point. But what's crazy, locals just didn't seem to care. They were just like, oh, you know, just relax, whatever. It's all good. Anyway, I think <sighs> hopefully like changing our bikes are still screwed, but uh, we're dealing we're dealing with that and that's something that's <laughs> going to be shit for a while. Yeah, but we did camp and for the first time it wasn't freezing. It was actually quite nice. It was really nice. Nice little pasta dish last night. A little, uh, little oats, oats this morning. So we, I think this country is one both of us have been looking forward to the most since we set off and it's taken us two weeks to get to what we wanted to do when we we're here. We're slightly off the beaten track, we're camping in this amazing valley and it's awesome. But yeah, it's taken us two weeks to actually get to a stage where we can do this. Yeah, but uh, yeah. let's keep our fingers crossed that luck changes. So today we're going to, again, we're just taking it easy and we're going to head up towards Song Cool, which is that way to it's the lake. It's about four and a half hours or so, quite a bit of off-road it seems. Yeah. It should be, should be fun. Get the early afternoon and chill out and maybe stay in a yurt. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> So uh, put all our gear on, loaded the bikes up, excited for a very good day, and our luck hasn't changed. What's that? Yet again, James's back tire is flat. <clears throat> this this time it absolutely can't be us screwing this up because we got a professional dude to fix this, and it's held on for a week, and now as we went to go, completely flat. So uh, good old go to stand luck. I guess it'll be another late arrival at Song Cool. Anyway, at least we got food, so we can eat something. Another tire change. Woo! <laughs> Okay, so tire is fixed, weather is good. Let's get onto the beautiful roads that we know Kyrgyzstan has. This is where it gets a little bit funny. We were both running very low on fuel, but we could see on the map that there was a petrol station towards the bottom of this mountain. But for some reason, my bike kept cutting out. This is me trying to explain the problem, but for some reason, the audio didn't work again. Uh, I had to basically coast down the entire mountain before we worked out what the problem was. Yep, so it is the, the fuel filter is being a little piece of shit. So uh, I'll show you what's going on. Fuel comes through here. Right now it's on off. So let's go through there, through this little filter in there. Watch, I'll turn it on. It's too low for that, but reserve. There should be fuel coming out, but there's nothing. 
And then this is the fun part when I blow into it. Shall I take my helmet off for this? Ah. I'll blow into it and then fuel will come out. See? So that filter's doing weird things. <laughs> oh, I love the taste of fuel. That's an easy fix though. That'll be, I mean, either keep blowing into it or bypass it for the moment until we can get another new fuel filter. Just a bit of shit, you know? Anyway, it was, always, it was fun rolling down the hill, but I got too flat to keep rolling. James, what are you doing? All right, so we rolled into town, made it to the petrol station. I don't think anyone's been here for years. Actually boarded up the... <clears throat> Maybe we can work out how to use this thing. Hmm. This could be an issue. The issue being that we are quite literally in the middle of nowhere. And we are both moments away from running out of petrol. Our map doesn't show any other petrol stations nearby, but we could see that there was a small village coming up, so we headed there and hoped for the best. Sweet! So they do have fuel apparently, which is great. I mean, who would have thunk it? Thunk it? Thunk it. Thunk it. You never heard that before? No. Who would have thunk it? It's a saying, Tim. Don't worry. But yeah, so we can get 92, which is pretty much the best you can get around here. Stoked. It's good. It's costing a lot more. Oh, I mean, it's costing eight cents more. Yeah. So, so it's not the end of the world. Some dude's just gone around the back. He asked how many liters we want. So we're getting 15 each. Nice little village. Look yeah. at this. Quaint. Quaint village. I'll oh, say. Yeah. It's kind of disturbing how many Snickers we have on this trip. <laughs> Couldn't find any other food. So we have Snickers. Basically, they, what they have in there is shitloads of different types of vodka and Snickers. Basically, yeah. So James had two bottles of vodka. Yeah, Jared four. And uh, Snickers each. It is our staple lunch half the time. So good. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> this guy helped fill our bikes up. We finished our Snickers and then we got back on the road. Things are finally looking up. Until this happened. Kyrgyzstan, it couldn't let us have one day without incident, could it? <laughs> but we will end this episode here. I mean, I'm narrating this video, so it couldn't have been that bad. But stay tuned for the next episode to see what happened. Uh, please like and subscribe, hit the little bell, it really does help us out. And uh, we'll see you soon.